And for those of you interested in seeing my quilt, I have not completely finished it. I have hand bound two sides and I'm working at it slowly but surely, but this is what the finished quilt looks like. And I believe it is six squares by seven squares. So yeah, this one definitely was a labor of love. <clears throat> Good morning everyone, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills, and yeah, it is early, I haven't even showered yet, I haven't gotten ready for the day, but I decided that um, there were a few things I wanted to get done before I start the day anyway. So uh, I have um, chicken broth to make, and I have uh, cleaned out my freezer yesterday, so there were items that I took out of the freezer to make room for other things. And one of the items that I took out was a whole bunch of flour, and I'm ready to use that now anyway. So that made room for probably uh, things like meat, which I will be replacing that space with. Another item that I removed was some um, peppers that I had, uh, barbecued peppers that I had made and froze, and because I didn't realize that I could pressure can them. And uh, so now I have taken them out of the freezer and I will, will be pressure canning them. And next time I make those, they will go directly into a jars rather than the freezer. And there are some things that are better in jars. <laughs> okay, hope you enjoy this video. So hopefully this lot will survive having been defrosted and then pressure canned. So at this point, I'm just going to load up these jars. They've all been washed and uh, these do need to be pressure canned for oh, 35 minutes. And as you can see, they're beautiful red peppers that have been blackened and cleaned. And I've got, now we just have to make sure we have no air bubbles in them. And we'll continue along here. I do have hopefully enough jars to um, take care of this lot. Now I didn't slice them at all, which I could have done. I just left them whole once they were cleaned, as you can see. So hopefully, yes. So you want to leave about an inch headspace, and I've got to check that for air, and I should be able to get an inch headspace out of that. But first of all, let's fill these jars. Now some of these are still cold. And these have amazing flavor. This is uh, probably the next time I do these, I will definitely just put them in the jars immediately. Just continue to take them out of these bags and hopefully I've got enough jars here. So, so yeah, next time I will not package them in the freezer. Now, the only reason I put them in the freezer was because that was how I was taught to do these. But. Uh, and it'd be nice if I could put them in oil. Now, if I wanted to uh, just leave them in the refrigerator, I could pack these in oil, but I don't want to do that. I want to be able to preserve them longer term than what I could do by putting them in the refrigerator. So, I can add some water to these, and I may not have to because of the ice crystals that are still on them. But if they were just freshly made and not frozen and defrosted, I would probably add water to these and um, once again, one inch head space. Oh, that is still cold. Oh, I should have enough jars, good, I think. And it smells awesome. I can still smell the uh, barbecue flavor on these. Okay. 
And yes, I could cut them into strips, but I'm not going to bother doing that. Let's see if I can get away with just these jars. I've got another four little bags to go. Looks like these jars should be adequate. Now we have eaten some of these. I did have more than this. Okay, and I'm going to start with a cold pressure canner here because these are still had a little bit of um, ice crystals on it. So you don't want to start off with um, hot on one side and cold on the other. So, and I'm going to top these up to, as I said, an inch from the top with cold water. Now, as much as I'd love to put oil in. I think for pressure canning I'm probably better off just to add water rather than oil if I was going to as I say create refrigerator types I would put uh, garlic cloves olive oil and submerge it in olive oil and keep it in the refrigerator they do last a while that way but not quite as long and my intent is to have these shelf stable and not necessarily move them from the uh, freezer to the refrigerator. Okay, that one could use a little more topping up. And next year, when I make these again, I will make them directly into jars rather than freeze them. Perfect. Okay, a little more top up there. Okay, I would say I'm good to go there. Now I've got everything ready here. I've got my vinegar. I've got a napkin to wipe the rims. I've got my lids soaking in warm water. So I'm ready to cover these and my rings are handy. So of course, once again, you want to clean the edges. And I'm gonna do two at a time here. Put the rings on finger tight. 
and as I said, these are still very cold, so the canner will have cold water. Just to minimize the uh, potential to break the jars. Okay, yeah. And I will get seven jars, and I'm quite happy with that. I'm just sorry that I didn't do this to begin with. Okay. Okay. So, roasted red peppers can be pressure canned. They can't be water bath canned, unfortunately. Put three quarts of water in my canner. I'm going to put it on the front burner this time. And put all these. Now I do have a rack at the bottom of this canner. Unfortunately, I don't have anything else that I can put in this canner at the same time. Uh, I was going to make some stock, and I could have waited, but stock only takes 20 minutes, where these have to cook for 35, so it's not as though I can put different items in there. Okay, so let me just get three quarts of water in this, and then we're good to go. And I'm going to add in the rest of the vinegar to keep my jars from clouding over with the mineral buildup. Okay, so at this point, we... Just put the lid on and wait till it starts to vent and then we vent it for 10 minutes. Now the other thing to keep an eye on is that this little vent hole here has to be clear. You have to be able to see light through it and that should be checked every time. Okay, so once this has come to a boil, we let it vent for a full 10 minutes. Then we add on the weights and let it come to in my particular location up to 10 11 pounds pressure because I'm less than a thousand feet so you have to double check what pressure you need for your altitude and at that point once it's come up to the proper pressure I let it can for 35 minutes and of course it is time for another package of bone broth or chicken stock I think virtually one and the same thing, but anyway, this is my, I, I did buy three packages the last time, and as I was cleaning up the freezer, I realized I still had one package left, so, and we're running out, so it's time to do another batch of chicken. There we go, another batch of chicken stock on its way to being made. <laughs> 